Hello everyone. Welcome to C programming lecture. This course is about the fundamentals of C programming. Don't worry if you have never programmed in your life. I will be covering each section in detail with enough examples. I, Kusal Ghimire, will be your instructor for this course. Here is a quick overview of the course structure. We will be discussing each of these mentioned topics in detail. First, we will go through the fundamentals of programming. Then in next section, we will be talking about C programming. In, in third section, we will be talking about control structures. In the last section, we will be talking about file handling in C programming. Let's dive into the first section of this course. Definition of a computer. There are lots of definitions of computer out there. Here is the common definition of a computer that you may have come across. A computer is an electronic device that accepts some inputs, processes it, and gives us a desired result that can be stored or displayed in the output device. That's quite a mouthful, but let's extract some key points from this definition. First, electronic device. Electronic device means the computer system is composed of electronic components that are responsible for the controlling the flow of electrical currents for the purpose of information processing. Simply a device that deals with the current. Second, accept some inputs. Accept some inputs emphasize that it can accept user input from input devices such as keyboard, mouse, etc. Simply, we provide inputs to the system through input, input devices. Third, process it. Process it means that the input we provided or, or any other data is processed by the CPU to generate some information. Processing could be arithmetic, logical, or control related. Lastly, store or display. Store or display output means that the information or result obtained from CPU can be stored on memory devices for further purposes or directly be displayed on the monitor that is our output device. This definition of a computer is actually explaining the architecture of a computer system which is now known to us as a new main architecture. It is a stored program concept that stores data and instruction in the same place. Here is a picture of it. Our computer system understands only binary systems, thus it cannot distinguish between instruction sets and data. It treats both of them as a sequence of binary digits or bits. So what does it mean to store both the instruction and data in the same memory? To answer this question, let us take an example. Suppose you have installed a software, let's take a VLC media player for convenience in your C drive or hard disk. Now you open VLC media player to watch a video. You are watching a video in C programming. The video is over and now you exit your VLC media player. Let's go through this sequence once again. The program actually is in secondary memory, hard disk, but to run it by the CPU, it goes through the following sequence. The VLC software instruction gets loaded into primary memory, that is RAM when you open the VLC media player in the second step mentioned above. Now imagine the video you are watching to be the data. The streams of bits that is video data also gets loaded into the same RAM. So this is the stored program concept where the instruction sets for the VLC media player and the data both are in the main memory. The instruction in data then transits from RAM to registers. And the CPU executes those instruction sets and processes data with the help of a register. How is this architecture relatable in our C programming course, you may wonder. I decided to include this topic in our lecture in order to explain under the hood operations of a compiler. 
that seems almost magical to someone who is new to programming. We will come back to this architecture later when we will be talking about memories. Next, we will be talking about bits and bytes of a computer system. But before that, here is a quick question. Have you ever wondered why are there so many types of memories? Hard disk, RAM, cache, register, etc. And what would have happened if the CPU tried to load everything from the hard disk instead of the previously mentioned sequence of operations? If you know the answer, let me know. Thank you for watching.